Hi, so I wanted to try and do a quick little video on um, how I do my binding. I know a fair few people said you're scared of binding. Um, I only did my first ever binding, um, I want to say January this year, so only a few months ago. Um, I really only started, and then after I did that one bag, I stopped for a very long time because I was, it was horrible. Never wanted to do binding again. Um, so I stopped for a very long time and then my first go again was when the Sophisticated Sassy came out um, and after that I've been non-stop binding, not gonna lie. Um, I now pretty much bind most of my bags if I can. I hate birthing now if I don't have to. So um, I'll just show you guys how I do it. A little bit about me. Um, I'm Sam. I am a self-taught sewist. Um, I everything I know is from high school home economics class from I don't want to admit how long ago. Um, I've pretty much taught myself how to do most uh, most things in terms of sewing. So if you're a really experienced sewist, please don't judge me. Um, I've only been sewing bags for a few months, so really not the most experienced. But I figured if I could handle or learn how to bind and it not look hideous, then maybe I might be able to help someone else as well. So my cheats way of binding is um, fold over elastic. So oops, wrong way round. So this is what I'm using today. Um, so it is shiny on one side, dull on the other. As you can see, it's fold over elastic. So it's got a very obvious um, indent right in the middle. So you just literally fold it. This is um, 20 millimeters, so I think that's is that seven eighth or six eighth of an inch, um, something like that. I'll have to double check. Now, one of my key tips I've got, um, because a lot of people say, oh no, my binding looks horrible and I have to go through a few times. One of my biggest tips is to try and match as best as you can your lining with your bias material, whether it's fold over elastic bias tape or pre-made bias tape, waterproof canvas, whatever it is, try and match the color of the lining, the bias tape, as well as your thread as best as possible. So this is my bag. You can see it's navy. This is my bias tape or fold over elastic. Again, navy. Don't know how well you can see my thread, but my thread is also a very deep, dark navy. So I've already bound half of one side of this bag. So as you can see, because of the colour um, of everything matching up, it makes any mistakes very hard to see. Um, I don't know if you can even tell. I've actually had to go over this spot twice. This is the front. I missed the back last, the first time I bound that bit. So, fold it over. So I had to actually go over again. But because the colours are so similar, it's really hard to see. And as you can imagine, we're looking at it right now, close up, um, wrong side out. So once you flip the bag over, you can really barely see anything with it. And that's one of the things I like so much about binding. It gives really amazing structure on the outside. And most of your mistakes are, or corrections are only seen by us, the person who sews it, not so much whoever uses it afterwards. Um, okay, so back to this. <laughs> Sorry, I ramble. Now, here's my bias tape. So I have now started getting a bit lazy. I don't like clipping. The reason why I don't clip is because I've worked out I don't need to clip to do this. Um, if you are really good at clipping, and I say really good because I'm really bad at clipping. Like, yes, I can clip things on well, but for some reason when it comes to taking them off, I'm really bad at taking the clips off. I end up making a bigger mess than if I just didn't clip. So I don't clip anymore. Um, I do use double-sided tape with this. Um, so fold over elastic, um, singe your end with a lighter before you use it. Now, I like to start my bias in the spot where I think is less likely to be seen. So this is this side. So um, this is my start location last time. So as you can see, I've actually done I think a pretty neat job so it's not super obvious but um, just because you will see there is an obvious you know overlap so I like to try to use a spot 
where it's not obvious. So like with this one, for example, I've done this. That's where your zipper is. So if you can imagine when you have the bag right side up and your zipper's all the way open, this is behind that. So it's going to be harder to see, in my opinion anyway. Um, that's up to you where you think is the best spot. So wherever I decide to start, which is going to be right here, I like to get a little bit of double-sided tape. Um, ideally, um, the one eight inch ones, um, so that you can then do a little bit of either side. Um, I've run out of it. So this is a six millimeter, so two eighths, so one quarter inch, um, which is not ideal. So what I do is I kind of just stick it on the top because all I'm really trying to do here is try to get my bias tape on for a starting spot. Um, and then once that's on, I can slip it under my sewing machine foot easily. Um, I don't have a super fancy sewing machine. I don't know how well you guys can tell. This is my lovely old girl. She's a Singer 201K. So she's a vintage sewing machine, a straight stitch vintage sewing machine. Um, she does the most amazing straight stitches. Um, but she's not a modern machine, so she doesn't do any fancy things. Um, a lot of the stuff that I hear people talk about, I don't even know what it means because all I've ever had is older machines. The machine I learned how to sew off was a 1970s singer. Um, and then eventually I moved up to, moved up, is that, a, is that the right word? Yeah, I moved up to a vintage, vintage singer. So she's a 1943. Okay, so I've taken my double-sided tape off. So all I do is my bias, my folded elastic, I fold it in half, which is just following that groove. So it's super easy. I put it over, make sure that it is really, the center is on the center there. And then because this is a 20 mil bias tape, I like to sew at um, a quarter of an inch. So this, Double-sided tape help keeps every helps keep everything in place while you move it under your sewing foot. So I've just done that. Lower my needle a little bit forward, a little bit back. Like I said, old machine. I have to do everything. Now, if you were clipping, you would have folded and clipped all of this around the edges. Like I said, I don't fold and clip because I'm lazy and I'm bad at clips. So what I do is I actually just hold it as I go and then I hope my machine's not too loud and you guys can still actually hear me I fold and then move it into the right position and then I go again so I'm not on my normal spot um, this machine is a knee lever so in case you saw my face just then that was because my knee lever decided to just keep going without me. So um, I'm not on my normal machine and it didn't like me. So these are with the curves as well. It's still super easy to do. I know that spot would definitely not have been right because when my knee lever kept going, I wasn't ready for it. But I don't know if you can see my finger here. So all I'm doing is I'm folding and bringing it into the right spot holding it in place. I know some people use, again, I'm super new at sewing, so I really don't know the right names. I call it my pokey pokey stick, but I've also lost it. So this is actually my seam ripper. Um, so you can just use your seam ripper to hold it in place. I actually struggle doing that um, with some materials where it's a lot thicker. Um, I will use it, but otherwise I find it's just easier for me to hold it in place with my hand especially without clips because I feel what well, I find anyway that I get to get in a lot closer so just section at a time so this section that I'm doing at the moment is a curved section so that's why I'm taking my time just watching it getting a little bit done and I found with fold over elastic with the curves um, because fold over elastic itself is quite I don't know if thin's the right word but it's quite easy to manage and like it obviously moves to how you want it to move so I found um, it when you're doing these corners and that it really just wants to follow and so when I fold fold it over like that and I just kind of slide it in 
it automatically slides kind of to the right position. And then it's just a matter of me making sure by the time it gets under the sewing foot, it's still in the right spot. Um, whereas when I've used clips, sometimes I've struggled with that. Sometimes the clips, when I pull the clips out, it pulls my elastic out. So my elastic's no longer in the exact right spot. Um, sorry if I talk too much. So, and now I'm obviously at a straight end, but what you can't see here is there's a really thick spot down here. Um, that's where I've got um, webbing as well. So um, a little bit about this bag as well. So what I'm doing, it is, um, I'm sewing the back panel onto the gusset. Um, well, it's the back panel is on the gusset. Um, this is a um, vinyl exterior waterproof canvas um, lining bag. So it is quite thick. And then as I said here, I've got seatbelt webbing that I'm just going over there now. So right here, I'm on a corner, as you can see. So what I do is I spin my bag around, fold, spin it in. And really, the fold over elastic really wants to do what you want it to do. So it makes it really easy to just keep going. Um, so I don't know how much you can see, but I wasn't going to show the whole part of me binding this whole section, but um, I actually don't have that much left. So I might just keep going and um, let you guys follow along with me. Um, just to see the whole thing but I found fold over elastic is where I've had the best luck with doing this I don't know if luck's the right word I don't know I do feel like it's a lot of luck so see how I've just curved that corner again there finger pay attention don't sew your finger off that's one of the good things with these vintage machines I think they never go too fast so I just take my time this is, I've mentioned before, a knee lever machine. So I just kind of lift my knee off a little bit, give me some time as I go around these corners. Now here, as you can see, this is my starting point. So um, if you were smart and don't mind wasting materials, you would probably have cut the amount that you need off. I don't do that, mine's still on the reel. The reason I don't do it is because I am extremely stingy and I don't want to waste material if I don't have to. So now I'm back to the last end of the straight here. So what I'm going to do is just going to see how much I need. Yep. So I just need to about here, cut that off, get rid of that. Got my lighter, singe it a little bit there. I don't have to singe it now. I can singe it at the end. Um, I like to singe it now just because then I know it's done. Otherwise, sometimes I forget and there's nothing worse with, you know, oh, yay, I've got a beautiful bag. Oh, no, fraying fabric. <laughs> so um, yeah, here I go just lift that needle keep going now at the end here this is where it can get a little bit annoying for me um, I have found sometimes that you know if I'm not matched up perfectly the bottom bit here likes to come out a little bit more because I don't have that extra bit to grip and kind of shove it in there so I like to have my finger up here use a pokey pokey stick again I'm sorry I know that's not the right name Pokey's pokey stick, hold it in at the bottom and then just go. And then, so what you will then do is finish that off, reverse stitch it, forward stitch it, ta-da. Now, as I said, I know there's going to be problems with this one, especially because I lost my foot at some point. So I'll move, oh yeah, this should be okay. So oh, that's the side I did before. <laughs> so this is the side I just did. So um, let me move the camera to make it a bit easier to show you guys. Hello. <laughs> okay, so this is what I have just done. This is the back side because obviously I was sewing it like this. So it all looks on camera like that. It all looks quite neat and tidy. It doesn't look too bad. So I'm just going to have a good little look. Um, if I've missed any bits, which, da, da, da. Oh, that bit where I caught the sewing foot is actually completely fine. No problems with it at all. But I have one little section here. Oh, can you see it? Yep, that I've missed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little clip here just so I can show you guys both ends of after I've fixed it. Um just to show you that when you use like the right color thread and um 
match everything up properly, hopefully. <laughs> um, it actually shows up quite well. So earlier I was doing um, base down, gusset up. So in order to fix this, I like to do it this way. So it is the opposite way as to how I was doing it before. Um, it is a bit fiddly, um, especially right now because I'm doing the second piece um, of it, um, obviously. So there's, you know, a bit thicker gusseted area. I can do it on the other side, um, but I just find this way, at least I know I'm definitely catching it. Do you know what I mean? So just go a little bit up from where I was. And most of the time I found with the fold over elastic, the reason it hasn't caught is just that it hasn't stretched well enough when I was holding it and pulling it. Um, so it's not because the length isn't right. It's just, I've not pulled it hard enough. So all I do is just hold it in place like I was before, but on the other side and reverse a little bit forward. And da -da -da. Yep. So that bit's all caught up, back, forward, da, and cut. And I'm going to clip that just so I can show you guys over here exactly how that looks. Sorry, if I was good at video editing, I would edit this so you wouldn't have to see it like this. Okay, so here is the bit that I've just, you can just see that's the thread there. So that's the bit that I've just done on this side. So over on this side, like see, you can barely tell. The thread's exactly the same color. So it makes it really hard to kind of tell that, oh yeah, she's gone over that twice. So that's that there. Um, I wonder how hard is this going to be to birth? I think I'll leave the birthing till later because that's just too much effort. But you can kind of see when, when a bag is opened, see, like this is a zipper section, right? So that's opened. No one's really looking at your stitching going, oh no, that's not the best stitching in the world. It's just us that do that does that, you know? And so this is my little fold over elastic hack. I don't even know if I'd call it a hack. I know I've seen plenty of people do it, but it's the way that I've found works really well for me with fold over elastic um, binding and I've had really good success with it. The other thing that I've had really good success with, um, Sophisticated Craft is about to bring out Sophisticated Supplies. So keep your eyes out on that because there is some amazing bias tape in that and it is the only bias tape that I've used where I've been able to do it without, you know, hating myself. <laughs> I'm not even going to show you my first ever binding job. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll try and take photos of it later. It was really bad. So I really don't want to show it. it yeah, because we're nightmares. Whereas as you can see, this nice and neat, you saw how long it took me to do. If I didn't talk so much, it really wouldn't have taken anywhere near as long. So that's my little tips and hints on how to bind with fold over elastics.